not to do with lab-based learning, it's to do with um, external teaching. So, of course, um, oh, this is, these are the old slides, right. Um, the, this, the, this is students, clinical staff and academic staff, um, and we look at the competences that the students have got to learn in clinical placements, how they record that learning, in other words, um, the, the professional competences, um, and then preparing digital resources to help some of the generic learning that tutors and students can essentially pick and mix. Um, and also um, the e-portfolio will help um, facilitate feedback and assessment. As the project's gone on in the first year, we've found that it's absolutely central to have an e-portfolio. And so a lot of the work and the content for the web page has been based on that. I'd like to thank our partners. We've got uh, partners in UCD, UL. We did have a partner in NUI Galway, but Josephine Bolland retired. So thank you, Josephine, for your help. Um, and then we work also with um, IT Tralee and with uh, Trinity College in Dublin. The, um, relative roles between e-portfolio piloting and evaluation, competency frameworks, a sharing of the competency frameworks, and development of digital resources are essentially within a partnership um, of, of the network. So what, what have we achieved? Um, at the last panel meeting, um, we had prepared a lot of content, but we didn't have a digital platform, and so you suggested that we um, focused less on interprofessional education, and Dimpna, thank you very much indeed for giving a lot of reasons why that was a good idea. <laughs> um, and to build the, the platform against which to put the content on. So that's essentially what we've been focusing on. But I'd like to say that the, the, the collaboration between the partner institutions across the country is functioning better and better. We've got buy-in, we've got ideas, we've got new ideas, and it's a vibrant group. We've got some policies and protocols, mainly based around e-portfolios, and we've also uh, divided, uh, looked up common competences within the statutory documentation for medicine, nursing, and pharmacy. We'll come on to that in a little while. And um, Aaron, our project manager, will talk you through some of the e-portfolio documentation in a while. We've also developed, uh, we are continuing to develop digital resources and we've got a web page, we've got a, apparently a Twitter feed, and we've now got an app so students can put it on their phone or their tablet. That's what they insisted on when we were getting student feedback last year. So what are the deliverables? If I could um, introduce Erin O'Connell, who's our project manager, and she's going to show you some of this. Okay, well the first thing, we're gonna just look at the website. Um, and um, really this is the major platform of how we're going to deliver things to um, our students and also to our tutors. Um, one of the main things that feedback we got from students was, yes, we'd like this, but we want it on an app. So um, I spent a lot of time, um, I'd only started on the project actually seven weeks ago, so uh, I've spent a lot of time to get to this stage in the last seven weeks. There's a huge amount of information gathered by the team, by the partners and the exec on e-portfolios. We have in particular um, TCD have been piloting e-portfolios with first year students who are now just going out on placement. Um, UCC, uh, School of Nursing and Pharmacy have also been piloting e-portfolios and then IT Tralee have been very very, very strongly um, piloting e-portfolios, so much so that they've built it into their curriculum and they have been assessing it through a module. So the first thing that I'm going to um, show you is I'm going to talk a little bit about e-portfolios and then I'm going to hand you to Henry, who's going to cover some competency uh, frameworks and also our digital resources, and hopefully all our videos will work. Um, so as you come to the um, e-portfolio section, okay, you have your standard definition of, you know, what are the e-portfolios, then also you have how do students use them. Now a lot of, we've been very lucky with our partners in IT Tralee in that as they were going along and piloting the e-portfolio, um, they were encountering a lot of issues, say, you know, we picked a, a tool, PebblePad, to pilot for the e-portfolios, um, and while PebblePad does everything that it can possibly do, it also can add a little bit of complexity 
complexity to when you're piloting a, a portfolio. Um, so the Laura Rafferty there came up with some fantastic um, presentations, number one, but it's a 30-slide uh, presentation, so that'll tell you how much is involved in actually getting um, the e-portfolio up and running. So she also created some little videos, um, or audios, really what they are, using um, screencast. I'm just going to see if this one works here. Uh, and what I like about these is for students, they were short, tiny little clips. It worked a while ago, it didn't work. Uh, I actually have one here, which I can show to the forum. It's working. And you get the general idea of how it works. And, and it's a very good way for students. They just want to go, I want to experience the game in the portfolio. They just go here, see, watch it for two or three minutes, and it's just talking in a very nice, relaxed voice. And you don't have to go through a 30 slide presentation. Oh, I should stop it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're very grateful to our partners in Tralee for supplying that to us. Um, and we found that very beneficial in pharmacy and also in nursing and UCC that we were able to share these between us and our students found them very useful as well. How do tutors use the um, e-portfolios? Uh, recently, we were invited to a PebblePad user group meeting in Dublin. So this gave us an opportunity to reflect on actually, you know, we were throwing ourselves in at the deep end using e-portfolios and using PebblePad. Um, but this gave us an opportunity to assess how we were using it ourselves. So we were able to come up with what we liked about PebblePad, what we didn't like about PebblePad, how we would like to see it changing in the future, and how our students were benefiting from it. Um, and there's a very good presentation there and um, that you should be able to go in and take a look at it again. It's probably another 20 slide presentation um, on, on how tutors use e-portfolios. Um, Tom O'Mara, um, in a, the Office of Vice President of Teaching and Learning in Cork, um, gave a fantastic presentation to a wider forum on the technology to support e-portfolios. Um, and he was doing a comparison, basically, of your very basic Portfolio, starting with, say, Word, WordPress, LinkedIn, going right up to the top of the range, which is what PebblePad, which is the one that we chose to pilot. And while he was saying all portfolios are equal and some are more equal than others, that's definitely what we found as well uh, in complexity and also in what it can deliver for you. We have um, a comparison of tools section. I haven't actually uploaded that here yet. We have fantastic work done on assessing what PebblePad can bring you know, to a, a module and assessing core competencies and reflections. Um, but also we have there comparisons of other tools like Mahara um, that I want to get approval for wording, especially if you're putting it out on a public website like this. We have the criteria that we used for choosing um, our, our portfolio, our e-portfolio, um, and we began basically with a paper-based portfolio and then looked at what adding technology would bring to each of those areas, and it was a very good way of, of doing it. Um, it kind of opened up our eyes to, you know, whatever you had in your paper-based bo portfolio needs to be better again for your digital-based portfolio. We have an evaluation of the project reflective practice section and also an assessment and feedback section. We have some um, very good documents for, you know, survey monkey surveys and also questionnaires for students. And tomorrow, actually, I'm traveling to Tralee um, because now that they have finished a module completely in an e-portfolio, we have a focus group running because the students have their marks now. So we have two focus groups for students running <coughs> tomorrow and one for tutors. Um, just to see what their feedback is. A lot of the feedback coming in was, um, you know, that you know you can't assume students all have the same IT capabilities. It also opened up, in a, you know, areas of a huge amount of training involved for using e-portfolios as well, which I'll go into a little bit more in um, our sections of uh, lessons learned. So I'm just going to hand you over to Henry now on the competency frameworks. If that's okay. Just as well, we're running this on a test website because we got the name registered last Thursday, so we're a little bit nervous about moving everything over um, before Where today. Are the so keep going down, sorry. Oops, no, no. Where are the slides? Oh, the, sorry, just back here. Yep. So um, th we spent a long time looking at um, the, the statutory documents for pharmacy, for nursing, <coughs> for medicine. 
And we, in fact, we got an English postdoc uh, as a project assistant to look at the, the themes within those, so there would not be any sort of medical or nursing or pharmacy uh, bias. Um, and what we found that you could divide the, the shared competences into professional and practitioner areas. Um, and I've given some examples here. We subdivided them. And the, the, the work that we're doing with the digital resources, with our partners, is to work out suggestions for clinical scenarios and tutorials that may cover this. And then <clears throat> going a lot on, on the, the, um, the, the help that Dimpna gives us it, um, from her project, to try and work out how we can get um, nurses, doctors, and pharmacists together. We've had one or two focus groups, and they say that interprofessional discussion and learning is very, very important. So what, what are we doing? We've developed a very strong, a very cogent um, network of practitioners and educationalists. We've developed a shared competency uh, document. We're probably going to publish in two different journals, one a, an educational journal and another one a professional journal. We've uh, looked at beyond the how-to-do portfolio um, uh, instructions to say, how do you actually use it? How students and tutors, what, what are the, the, the shortcuts? So, uh, and the, the evaluation of the e-portfolio will be um, submitted for publication. We're developing a, a library of clinical scenarios and other digital resources, um, mainly uh, with our partners um, in UCC and in, in University of Limerick. And we've got um, sharing of materials and guidance, which we hope can be used for interprofessional learning. How are we evaluating the project? I've uh, sent the um, two-year work plan through to the National Forum the other day. Uh, the members of the panel can look at that to check where we're doing. But essentially, we're using the work plan to see what we're achieving and what, what the holdups have been. We're doing pretty well. Um, and since um, we um, got agreement from the National Forum to, to appoint a project manager with uh, a high level of digital skills, it's made the, the, the platform much easier to put into place. We're um, piloting the e-portfolio and the website and the, the Twitter feed is live. So this is just examples of the work plan. I won't go into details there. Um, and what, and then uh, if we can just have a look at some of the digital resources yep. for a couple of minutes. Perfect. The, the first one, and, and Audrey Griffin is very happy for me to use this um, fully. Um, uh, she, she's given consent, and she's a lady who's going through treatment for cancer. And there's some fella talking to her at the beginning. The first question that I'd like to is talking about the word cancer. It's a pretty strong word. What do you understand by it? Fear is the one word that comes to mind when I think of cancer. Um, it's my second time having cancer. So I think first time I went into it, it was unknown. But now, the second time around, it's more scary. It's the fear of it, um, fear of dying. We've got 35 minutes of an interview with a remarkably uh, strong woman, um, and also we've had a second interview halfway through her treatment. Um, we're uh, currently editing it up into two or three minutes snippets, communication, breaking bad news, how to deal with other professionals, how not to talk to people, so that these aren't just talking about the cancer journey, that they can be dropped into various um, tutorial um, or generic tutorials. Uh, another one, oh, Lord, I didn't know that was there. Um, and then we have another interview. This is with uh, Dr. Jenny Swan from Sheffield, who um, is a GP, had worked for nine years in an asylum centre, uh, talking about that, cultural awareness. Um, the important thing with cultural differences that you mustn't assume that you know. You mustn't assume, for instance, that the person is opposite you is a Muslim woman that you know what she wants from her healthcare worker, that you know what she has been taught about her body. That, um, I, I think we're running out of time, so Jenny, thank you very much indeed. Just briefly to finish things off, 
Perfect. And um, just one of the things that we, you know, kind of keeping with the reflective aspect of the project, I just wanted to talk for a minute or two about the lessons that we've learned so far. In particular, um, for example, in the area of digital resources, just even sharing the, the, the physical way of sharing resources, digital resources between the partners, we had to create a YouTube channel for ePrep so that we could easily up and download, share the videos, and also have access to them on the website. Um, within the area of ePortfolio, I suppose, when you're assessing an ePortfolio, there's different complexities involved in each of the modules, you need to look at your module to make sure it actually lends itself to an e-portfolio. Is there an area of uh, competency assessment? Is, it ref is there an area of reflective assessment for the student? Also, one of the things is open and open source and closed source. Um, for example, an e-portfolio tool like Mahara will give you an open source, but that to me screams I need an IT person working on this, as opposed to the closed source that we picked with PebblePad that gives you all the templates and you can get up and running straight away. Um, the other thing that we found was you know, when you're starting off with an e-portfolio, sometimes it's nicer to, or it's easier to be able to start with a uh, clean slate, so you're creating your own templates, whereas in nursing they wanted to keep a workbook, the workbook that they have in the hospitals, they wanted that you know, imported into an e-portfolio, and that was quite a complex thing to do as well, but Caroline and our exec managed to do a very good job of it. The other thing to take into account is also the revisions of e-portfolio software. So the one that we're currently working with is already going to be out of date in September. There's going to be a new revision of it. Now, it will be better and everything like that, but there's going to be an element of retraining involved in that. Also, one of the feedback that we got from SurveyMonkey is please don't assume that all your tutors and your students have the same um, IT skills. I, I better just rush through this. Thank you very much to the National Forum, to our Office of Vice President of Teaching and Learning, to the exec group and our national partners. Um, this is our support staff. I'd also like to say the biggest lesson that we learned was that we were floundering a little bit until we had some expert project management. So thank you to Catherine, Erin, thank you to the master's student at UCC in pharmacy and our project assistant who uh, did the thematic analysis. And you can find us there. Sorry for thank overrunning. You, Sorry. Thank you.